these man was just chef man in the neck. Like, chef, the guy that I'm on about manages my man, chef this geezer in his neck like eight, eight, nine times. The geezer, I, I'm holding the geezer. I'm thinking, his blood's on me. You've chefed him. The geezer's probably dead. Then the guy just woke up, ran off down the landing. The, the shank's still in his neck. Yeah, then I ended up going to jail when I was 20 for like okay. four years. That's I was out on a night out when I was like a, on a student night out in Leeds. Yeah. I ended up getting into a fight with some guy. One punch was thrown and that was it. Yeah, like I didn't kill him, though. the hospital killed him. Meet Ty Mitchell, a man convicted of murder when he punched a guy on a night out who ended up dead. He grew up in prison and found peace through Islam. Today, he shares his story with you on how to not make the same mistakes he did and live a fulfilled life. You just have to just put your ego aside and think about your family and think about your future and stuff because it can really change your life. One punch can change your life and their life, do you know what I mean? So just think twice, man, before before you get into these things. Just walk off, man. I wish I'd have walked off at the time. Even yeah. if he was putting it on me, if I'd have come back then, I'd just walked off. But obviously I was a lot younger and insecure then, so it's different. Thank you, Ty Mitchell, for coming down all the way from Dubai. I've been checking out your stories and I've seen a lot about you. I've also heard a lot. Yeah. But I would first like to start on your story and where it all began. What part, like how far back do you want me to go? When you was 18 years old. 18, yeah. What was I doing at 18? I was boxing, man. I think I just turned pro at 18. Pro boxing at 18. Um, I was living with my parents, with my stepmom and my dad. Um, and I was just trying that. I wasn't even taking boxing serious then. I don't take it serious mm. now, but I wasn't taking it <laughs> serious then. So I was like, just remember, I'm young now. So all I want to do is mash down girl. Go uh, partying, go raving. That's what I wanted to do. But obviously, I wanted to box at the same time. But it was just something I was good at. It wasn't really my passion. Like boxing ain't actually my passion. It's just something I'm good at and get paid for. It's like a job. Uh, um, so yeah, then not long after, I just started my pro career. I wasn't I wasn't like, I was tr not training like going out before fights and stuff. So it's like it wasn't really going as well as I'd anticipated. Um, but yeah, then I ended up um, going to jail when I was twenty. For like okay. four years. So oh, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. Four, four years. Four years. And what was that? Um? That was for manslaughter. Mm. Yeah, one punch manslaughter. Yeah, so Sorry, I was out on a night out when I was like a, on a student night out in Leeds. Yeah. I ended up getting into a fight with some guy. One punch was thrown. Um, that was it. Yeah, like I didn't kill him though. The hospital killed him. Like he went to hospital, they mashed him up. Um, okay. Yeah, so okay. what they saying, if you never put him in hospital, you wouldn't have been, do you know what I mean? He wouldn't have yeah, died in it. Right. So basically that's what happened. The, the hospital got sued, found guilty because they killed him. The cause of death was them, not me. Okay. But they're saying, if you never put him in hospital in the first place, it wouldn't have happened. So yeah, that, that, that's still that, kind of a piss take though. Yeah, but looking back on it, like you have to take responsibility. At the time, I was a bit annoyed, thinking like, if I never killed him, they're going to charge me for it. They charged me with murder, not even manslaughter. Like, so they charged you with murder. murder? Yeah, yeah, murder, I've seen yeah. that, you know, because I've typed in your name and yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, charged for murder. Yeah. And he, he goes, what murder? murder. Yeah. And then, yeah. I, thought, I, I mean, I heard it was manslaughter. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, no, it was manslaughter, but I got charged with murder. They offered me yeah. manslaughter before the trial. I said no, so they said, want a murder trial? I said, let's do it. So I went mm. a murder trial. I got uh, found guilty of manslaughter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the time I was, I was thinking, look, why are you charging me with that if I never killed him, etc. But looking on back on in hindsight, it was a small price to pay. Like, okay, I served four years in jail, but I came home. He never, do you get yeah, it? So yeah, like, I you have to him. take his family into consideration. They wanted justice. They want me in jail for the rest of their life. So as I grew up and I understood stuff a lot more and was a bit more mature about things, I was like, I'm glad I got the sentence I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I went to jail because look, I didn't have to, I should have walked away in it. It was, mm. it was both at fault, we both was, Arguing with each other, we both came with each other at the same time. Um, but you have to just to take ownership when you get older to get it. Someone's lost their son, their brother, do you know what I mean? So, True. in comparison, what's that? It's like a, for a little four years out of my life, he's lost his, do you get it? So, he's a bit of a piss take with the justice system, but at the same time, as I find, I think it was fair. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was a big, that was a big, um, that shaped my life in a lot of ways. So, then obviously, put my boxing career on hold. I was never really allowed to box pro since um, because my license was so long. I had a license for six and a half years, seven years when I came out. So I only came off license actually like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so by the time now I'm old enough to go back pro, I'm 32 and I'm too old to go pro. Like I can't mm. really start pro career to get it like yeah. 32. So I've just been doing the influencer boxing and the like that kind of route of stuff at the minute. So that's like a very broad description of what my yeah. life's been like. But yeah. That's crazy. So I want to just go back to that night specifically. So obviously there's a lot of young lads who go out and get into a brawl and get into a scrap and obviously you've done it yourself. So mm. looking back looking back on that night, what would you have done differently and what would you say to younger lads who were going out maybe looking for a route? Yeah, so 
you never think someone's going to die when you have a fight. People have fights all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's actually far more common than what people think. So it takes you to land on your head wrong or anything can happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, just because you're not using knives and stuff, hands can still cause a lot of damage. And a lot of people do die from it. So just think twice before it and try and avoid it all costs. Like before, when I was younger, I had too much pride. So I can't walk away from a fight. I wouldn't start them, but I wouldn't walk away. Mm. Mm. Now I don't care. Even I've had people swing for me and also put it on me, and I'm just like, all right, safe. I just walk off because I know I can oh, smoke so you. Yeah. But what's that gonna prove? I want to go home. I want to. I've got a son to look after. I have responsibilities. What? And I don't care if people think they're better. Like, but then I couldn't take the fact that oh, now everyone's looking at me. I walked away. I look like a punk. Now I couldn't care less. Okay, even if I am okay, I'm a pump pump. I'm shook. Okay, <laughs> safe. <isn't it? laughs> what difference does that make? What difference does your opinion make to my life? So, yeah, you just have to just put your ego aside and think about your family and think about your future and stuff because it can really change your life. One punch can change your life and their life, do you know what I mean? So just think twice, man, before before you get into these things. Just walk off, man. I wish I'd have walked off at the time, even yeah. if he was putting it on me. If I'd have come back then, I'd just walked off. But Mad. obviously I was a lot younger and insecure then, so it's different, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So life in prison, how was that? It's, it's magic, I'm gonna say this, but it's mad peaceful, bro. Oh. Yeah, like I had some of the most peaceful times in my life in jail because you're not got, you're in this rat race of life. You got to get up, you got to try and make money, you got to, there's bills to pay. As soon as you pay bills, more bills come in. Like, just bills, bills, <laughs> non stop, bills, 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 bills. And as soon as you pay one, another one comes, you're just like, there's no, there's no let up. Mm. So, you got to worry about stress. Just, just all life, you got to do this, you got to be here, you got to do that. And in jail, you just, there's nothing. Like, you just literally do the same thing every day. You got no, you're getting fed, you know, there's food on the table three times a day. You know that you just in you you literally just go gym, go chilling you and go back to yourself, mate. You go out on the land and have a shower, chat to the man, and then go back to yourself. So I didn't mind it. I've always been a bit of a popular loner. I grew up with my mum and my uh, three siblings until I was ten, and I moved to my dad. So from ten years old, I lived at my dad's with my stepmom and dad, and I was by myself. They was obviously adults doing what they was doing. I was in the house by myself. I go to school, come back, I'd be by myself. Um, they would be out late, get up, like uh, like I'd hardly ever see them. So I've just yeah. been by myself. So then obviously I grew up in pri prison for the next four years, from 20 to 24. It's a long time, like they like, they shape you a lot, isn't it? From like adult to man. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, yeah, just it was just comfort to me. I didn't know any different. I'm very good at being by myself. Even to today, I spend most of the time by myself. I'm mm -hmm. always in my house by myself alone. It's just like a comfort place, I guess. So I didn't really mind it. Like I was in a single cell, 90, 95% of the sentence, so. I was just chilling, man. I was just, I just went to gym, got a hinge. <laughs> <laughs> did did really anyone much. try? Yeah, there's a couple of scraps. Yeah, yeah but not there wasn't really much. Saying I was in there four years, probably in a lot four or five fights, and most of them was not to do with me, it was to do with my bridging. Most of the time, there's only one fight that was, um, I think, yeah, there's only one fight that was because, like me and Agiza had a disagreement, and we had got into it. Um, but the rest of them was someone I don't know, my bridging money, I'm lending in my, my, my mobile because I had a phone in there. Mm. He's not paying, then he's trying to get brave, so then we end up, I end up smacking him up. Then there was like some big fight with my other bridgings, so I backed it. Just the other stuff, most of it wasn't me. But to be fair, in jail, there's not really that many fights. Young offenders, there's always fights in there because yeah. they're young. Yeah. yeah, I've been young offenders before. Um, and there was fights in there, them lot, were, they just fight for because they're good. But in adult jail, no one's really interested. Like, everyone just wants to go on with a sentence. There is obviously fights here and there, but it's rare. So did, did, you ever, did you ever worry, like, let's say, you accidentally punched the geezer and, yo, no, the same thing could happen? In jail, it's different because you have to become a different person in jail to survive. You don't even care if they die. That's how my day is. Like, even if you yeah. hit him and dead, you don't even care. You're not in that frame, mind frame. You've got, you in a, it's like being in a jungle with lions. You have to be a lion. Do you get it? So you don't even think about them things. It just is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. There's people getting stabbed up in front of you and stuff like it. It's mad in that times. It's rare that it happens, but when it goes off, it goes off. So Quick. Yeah, it goes off. Like the fight that I had just before I come out, it was actually with my, one of my tight bridges from London. He actually manages one of the most, the biggest rapper in the UK. I'm not going to say no names because I don't want to hurt him up, but me and him got into it with some nuts, man. And yo, he went off, man. People was getting shefted in. People was getting Bro. battered over the head. People were like, all right, we, it went off the blood. The score, the, all the gloves on the, just ran off and locked us on the wing. They got shook. Like, they tried to come in and just going bad? off that much. They got scared. They locked us in the wing. And people were just getting smoked. So you're telling me, towards the end of your sentence, when you could have possibly been free, your life was put at risk? <laughs> Not my life. Other people. <laughs> <laughs> Not my life. Kind of. Well, basically, my, there was three of us. It was me and my two bridgings. My bridging, 
who manages my man, he had two weeks left. I had four weeks left. I'm over bridging. I had six weeks left. So we all was right towards the end of our sentence. Yeah. And obviously, just one thing led to another. It's something to do with basically me and him had a problem with this other guy, but I wasn't really that bothered about it. It was over a debt that was owed. Mm. But he wasn't trying to hold these like, nah, but nah, my mum licked him down with a piece of wood. Then he must have gone and got his bridge. And then it's just us three against like 30 of them, but we fucked them up, bro. We battered them. But these men are shit. I'm not, I'm not really on this stabbing thing unless it's like last resort. I don't really get into it. That's not my thing. Um, but these man was just chefing man in the neck. Like, chef, the guy that I'm on about manages my man, chef this geezer in his neck like eight, eight, nine times. And the geezer, I, I'm holding the geezer. I'm thinking, his blood's on me. You've chefed him. The geezer's probably dead. Then the guy just woke up, ran off down the landing. The, the shank's still in his neck. But obviously, nobody died. We all got something. I was about to say, how did you not? Know? Wait, so, wait, so, wait, yeah, wait, wait, I don't know how he didn't die. Bro, bro. Got shit. Like eight, nine times. Yeah. That's crazy. And no, no he didn't die. die. He didn't die. He so went to hospital. Did, but he did, didn't did anyone get their like sentence extended? No, because they can't prove who did nothing. Oh. They can't prove no one. And everybody just kept. So, no, no one snitched. Yeah. So these they only put me and me and the other guy in the block. Everyone else, um, just some people got moved wings and stuff, and then that was it. Like we all got I got out from the block, he got out from the block before me, and that was it. And now I wrote and I see him all the time with my still my dog to this day. So yeah, it's mad. <laughs> that's mad. That's so. That was the maddest one. That's some. Have you watched the raid? They watched the raid with a fighting in the block and no, there's no, no, no. literally that's like there was like this three levels and it was like I was fighting on one level, he was fighting on another. Mother Bridges fighting down there, but it's like we're all outnumbered. But we've got. But, oh, it was mad. It's, it sounds like a movie, bro. Because <laughs> like like the, the yeah. picture I got in my head is literally a movie, and the yeah. fact that you've just like reinforced the movie, like yeah. the layers and that, you know, prison they got floors. So you're telling me you just banging bare man out? Anyone that's coming out smoking them. Um, I think I took a piece of bat off once someone and licked him down with it. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, I was just, I was just, I was just, yeah, letting his hands go. But it, it only probably was lasting like five minutes. But like you can imagine, five minutes in that situation cool. seems long. Yeah. But yeah, it was yeah. good. But it was, yeah, it was mad. People were chasing people with hot water with sugar, and it was just Ooh. all mad. Yeah, it was just Ooh. going from one thing hot, to another. Hot water and sugar. Yes, yeah, so they put scalding water in like oh a pot. God. Yeah. And they put sugar in it, so when they fling it on you, it sticks to your face and burns your face, scissors your oh. face. Yeah. Oh or what God. they'll do is they'll get like a like a toothbrush that they snap the end off, and then they'll get like two razors and they'll melt it and put the two razors in. The reason they put two is because they can't stitch it. Then if there's one slash, they'll stitch it. But say if there's two close together, they can't stitch it. So that's that's why they do the two razor thing. So after mine, yeah. uh, after mine, uh, yeah. That's Jail life, bro. Yeah, Man said you only have four years in there. Imagine if you had like another ten. Yeah, but you know what it is in them real long jails. It hardly ever goes off because they all got to be. They're all in there for years and years. And all I know, I know what some of the men getting out, so they got nothing to lose. So they don't even cause trouble with each other. Because you know what it is when men go. Men always, men always know there's another threat of violence from each other because men are men, and if mm. certain things from each other, that's why men try and be more cordial if they can't because they know the threat of violence towards each other mm. not even a shook thing they just know is it worth it like I'm going to argue with you I can't you can't just go around trying to boss and bully everybody so everyone tries to get on in peace and harmony there's no obviously if you're taking the piss no one's going to take it but if you're respectful yes. and that, especially in them bigger man jails no one really it's, it's rare but like you say when it goes off it goes off so goes off. Yeah, it's one of them so tell me about visits. How was that? Who came to who came to visit you? Bear girl, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's joking. Yeah, Bear girl, bro. <laughs> Obviously, my family was always consistent. So my family, my tight dogs, they always come through the whole time. But I had a phone in it. I always had phones in that. So I was just messaging. These times it was Facebook. We didn't have an Instagram and Snapchat Gross. and all these things. So I'm just on Insta, on Facebook, yeah, just chatting to Bear girl. Some I've never even met. They're all just coming up on visits and... <laughs> It's weird that's coming yeah. like a oh, high yeah, time. Yeah, just like, yeah, like I'm just saying, oh, come check, man. And I, I'll be chatting to him on the phone and I'll be texting them, this and that, we're yeah. talking. And then, yeah, then, um, yeah, just get, that's all I used to do. That was my little thing, just to try and pass the day. I used to just see how many girls I could get. I think, and if I'm in jail, I get you to see me like a game. And that's all I used to do, just get big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like I get two girls to come together and, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> no me. All right, bright or no? First day out, what did you do? Yeah, so when I come out, I wasn't... So basically, they had my days wrong because what happened was I got charged with um, Section 18 because when I got locked up, the guy hadn't died yet. He died like five days later in hospital. So okay. then they come like a month later and then re-arrested re me and recharged me with a murder. But they never counted that month to my sentence. So then there was a discrepancy on my dates. I'm like, no, I'm out of this day. I know how long I've been in jail. They say, no, it's this date because they started it from when I got sent re-arrested, not from when I got originally arrested. Okay. So I didn't know if I was going to get out or not. So I was hoping the next day I'd like, I, they said, well, the person's not here. They make the decision tomorrow. So then they open up, open up my door, said, yeah, you're out today. I was gas, like, finally. Yeah, yeah. I was just bare quiet. Like, I don't know, like, it was just a bit, I wasn't overwhelmed. I was just like, I don't know, just bare quiet. I'm quiet. 
before I went to jail, I was mad hyper and stuff. Mm. I think I'd mellowed out a lot in jail. Um, but yeah, my pet, my 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 best mates and my my best mate, my cousin, and my dad come to pick me up. I was it. Just went to go see family. Just had a chill one. I went to the boxing gym. That was it. Yeah, it wasn't nothing crazy. So what was like? So you've been in there for four years, and I can imagine that was mentally tough. Mm. What's some of like the biggest mental? I want to say the mental changes you've made since from being obviously having young and energy. Grew up, you know. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to copy job because it's like Groundhog Day because you do the same thing every day. You kind of a bit immature. I was a bit immature in some ways still because not. I was in jail, grew up in jail. But. Um, I don't know, I was just a bit more laid back. And I'm, I, I found Islam in jail, so I turned Muslim in jail. And that had a big ah, impact on me. Had a big massive. impact on me. Yeah, big impact on me. So I was just a lot more laid back. I just understood life a bit lot more. I understood myself a lot more and my purpose and stuff. So I just mellowed me out a lot, I think. I just mellowed me out, yeah. So how is it, ref- I don't know if you say reforming, turning back to Muslim? Oh, yeah. reverting. Reverting, yeah. yeah. So, so how is it reverting back to Islam? Yeah, so like mine, I'm not someone that follows the crowd at all. So I was like thinking, you ain't brainwashing me. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes in jail, people try and speak to you about it here and there. It, to be fair, not that much, but like a little bit. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's not really for me. Like I'm fucking, I just want to get drunk and shag girl. Yeah, like I can't do that if I'm Muslim. That's all I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. so, but like yeah. right towards the end, so right, be, really close to me getting out, I ended up finding a book in a cell. So they moved me cell and there's just a book on the side. So I was bored, they had no TV in there. So I read the book and it's called A Brief Illustrated Guide to Understanding Islam. And it's talking about them. Scientific facts of the Quran, like how the baby's made inside the embryo and what it looks like after so many days and what mountains are for and astrology, just loads of different things, yeah. And I was thinking it's impossible for somebody to, like science, our science with all the technology and the microscopes and everything we've got, I've only just been able to work this out in like the past hundred years. This is talking about this in grave detail. Point like it's not it's not like um talking about it a little bit, it's very, being very detailed. Mm, sorry, and I'm saying, well, it, 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 how can everything, maybe one off, two, but when you're talking about hundreds of things, different kinds of things, the embryo, the earth, the clouds, the sea, this, that, the other, and it's very precise. It talks about what it looks like in particular days. I'm thinking, well, it has to come from God. Who else can it have come from? Because no one else knew this. So I started researching it more, looking into it more, and then like probably six months before I got out, then I, then I accepted Islam. But yeah, that, it was the best thing I've done to this day. It's like the best decision I've ever made in my life, for mm. real. Serious. Yeah. So, after you came out, how did your boxing career go? Did did, did you think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to take it serious? Yeah. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to like give it my all, like take it serious. I did miss boxing when I was in there as well. So I thought, let me get, come out, give it more, take it serious. So my life, I wanted to start a charity and stop kids doing the same mistake I did. I wanted to push that through my boxing. So I had this like perfect idea of what was going to happen. So I come out after, normally when you're on license, you can't leave the country at all. Like you can't go. And I'd only been out three weeks and I asked my probation, can I go to France to train? He said, yeah, I was going there with Team Fury. So I went out there, got in good shape with them. I was training, sparring with them. We all come back, was all meant to box on the same show. And the British Boxing Board was like, nah, you're not fighting on our shows. So I was like, rah. I swear to oh. Because I got a license, a foreign license. So they didn't even have to license me. So I didn't think they could stop it. So they said, no, you can't fight on our shows. So there's like, just wait a bit, like at least a year or so, then reapply. So I was like, cool, wait a year or so. There's like, no. Again, bear in mind, I've not been in no more trouble since. Since I got locked up then, to this date, I've never been in trouble with the law again. So... Yeah, basically, they're just messing me around for time. So I ended up doing like this like white collar unlicensed boxing. Mm-hmm. I done quite a few of them fights. And then by the time I was off license, I just realized I'm a bit too old now to try and still. Like I, when I first come off license, I was f- just turned 30. So I was like, oh, let me try and get it. And there's longer me out still trying to ask for stupid stuff like papers and court documents, this Sad stupid up. stuff. So then I was just like, yeah, I'm too old. So now that's when I've done the influencer boxing. So I like the influencer boxing for the simple fact is the money's good. And I don't have to train hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you was telling us off camera, bro. You yeah, don't, yeah, you I don't. don't so you got a fight coming up in three weeks. <laughs> have you trained? Not yet. I tell a lie. I did. I went. I trained once last week. That was it. Yeah, in my dad's gym. I can't bother, man. It's like I hate training, man. I hate. Yeah. It. Yeah. I hate training. I hate boxing, man. I just can't. I just like fighting. I just wish I could take a pill and get super fit. And that was it. I didn't have to train. <laughs> I hate training, man. I just like I'm lazy, but I just like to uh, sit down and eat takeaways and stuff. That's what that's my that's what I like to do. So, so what, what's your passion? Because earlier you said boxing isn't. Your I passion. don't have one, bro. Nah, People ask me this, bro. I've racked my brains, bro. If someone said, "Alright, then cool, you can 
if money was no option? Because that's how you find your passion. What would you do for free? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only things I do, which I enjoy, but they're not really my passions. I just like to do them sometimes. I play golf, I play tennis. But other than that, I, I don't have a passion. There's nothing where I could think, oh, I'd like to do that. I'd get up in the morning. Like, there's nothing you could say, all right, what gets you up in the morning? It just depends what mood I'm in. It changes every day. I might want to get up and play golf one day. One day I might want to lie in bed all day. The other day I might want to go to theme park. I might want to go on a boat. I don't know. I don't actually have a specific fashion. It's sad though, because I'd like to have a passion. You know, most people have passions they yeah, really enjoy yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't really enjoy it, and nothing really fulfills me. So, I yeah. feel like you'll find it. I feel like everyone yes. has. I was a gonna passion. say, I was gonna say, there's somebody I see you cherish very well on your Instagram. I see you speaking about a lot of time. Your son. Yeah, my son. Yeah, yeah. That's obviously that's my that's my dog, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> but even so, like he's he's only with me like half the time. Obviously, now I moved to Dubai, I see him even less, which is which is heartbreak because basically me and his mum split when he was like a month old and then from then until he was for the like seven years I had him three days a week so four days with his mum three days with me so we've got a bonding obviously when he's one month old I had to do all the nappy changes the night feeds all this because he's still a baby so it was hard but like he made us like it made the bond proper strong Mm. Um, but yeah, like man's just getting older and I don't even trust him in more. He wants to play football and that. Yeah. <laughs> to be a baller. He wants to be a footballer and play with his mates. I'm like, what about me, man? Like, <laughs> I was like, I hold him, hug him, kiss him, but he's getting a bit old. But now, nah, yeah, my son's my, my son's the best thing that ever happened to me, bro. That he changed my whole life, man. There's uh, probably a lot of times where I, I might have even pop I might have been um like say when I tell any people have swung for me, I might have even thought of it different. I don't know, but I might could have even thought a bit different if I didn't have a son. I might just think, you know what, hold this and give him one back. But Having my son, like I've got, I've got responsibilities now. I'm not gonna put myself in a situation where I'm gonna go back to jail to prove I'm a bad man. When I got a kid at home that needs a dad to look after mm. him, do you know what I mean? Mm. So, so yeah. what kind of example do you want to set for, set for your son? Yeah, I just want him to be a good kid, man. Luckily, man, I'm like he's such a nice kid. Like he's not, he's, he does not misbehave at all. The most he does is sometimes he'll like answer back, like why, why. Hmm? That's about that's about the most he does. Like he just doesn't, he doesn't. He's not knowing it all, so I'm blessed. He's a good kid, man. I just wanted to be, to learn just to be respectful to elders, to know himself. I think with me is I didn't know myself as a as a as a child growing up. I think I had a lot of questions. I was confused about a lot of things, and I think he come out sideways in a lot of ways, and I'd be quite insecure. I'd fight a lot, this and that. I just wanted to know to know his to know who he is, know his worth, know his purpose in life, and just be kind to people, man. I don't care what profession he does. I don't care if he's rich or if he's poor. I just wanted to be a good human being. Mm. Um, and that's what just be a good human and I'll be and I'll be proud of you do you know what I mean I don't care if you go and get all these G, um, A levels I don't care if you're a world champion boxer or football obviously that's good if, if that's what you're going to do but just be a good human being I think that's what I, that's what I want from him to be a good human hope he watches this when he's older I hope he watches this when he's older facts. and if you make money but I need some because you're expensive <laughs> <bro. laughs> he's expensive so tell us about Dubai what's, what's life like in Dubai Dubai is good man I think tax free Tax free. Mm. Yeah, Dubai's good, man. I like Dubai. It's, do you know what it is? It's more the, the, I like the way the countries run. They don't try and push all this dirty agenda with the LGBT and all this. They don't try and push it on your kids. Like, if you want to be that, be it, but don't try and push it, your views on my children. Do you know what I mean? They're my kids, not yours. Mm. So I'll program them how I want to program my child with my views, not yours. I don't think, I think in this country, they're trying to throw it down your throat. I'm looking at my son goes to private school, so. He doesn't, they don't do that there. Like, oh, they don't? Yeah, okay, they don't so. They're not trying to push that agender on their kids there. Because the, the parents are just going mad. Like, they're like, you're not doing that. Oh, oh, so, so I and thought then, they were doing you that. as well. So. I thought they were doing that in every school, you know, that out, pushing the LGBT. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, they may be on the public schools, but we, we've we got to say, we pay you. They don't pay us, do you know what I mean? So we sense. pay, so if the, 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 none of the parents are going to be on that. Like, oh, I feel my mates, their kids go there. Um, and do you think they're... Um, they're all blind muddy. You try and teach that we're taking our kids out of the session. But I said, if you've got to do it by law, just tell me and I'll take him out for the session. No big deal. I'm not bothered. Mm. I'd, I'd, I'd let him know that there's gay people in the wood because I don't want him to be naive and think, yeah, there's gay people in the wood, but it's not right. We don't do that. It's not It's not part of our religion. It's not part of who we are. So, nah, yeah, if they can do that. Him in the Islamic way as well? Yeah, his mum's a Muslim. Shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. So he's Muslim. Obviously, he's both his parents are Muslim. We raise him. He goes, he goes mosque three times a week for lessons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but we just let them know like you have to be respectful of whatever people's decisions are they can live their life however they live their life it's just not how we live our life Pe- they're saying it's okay it's not okay for us it's okay for them let them do what they want but for us that's not okay so I can I don't mind them obviously letting him know yeah there's different people but they're trying to say it's okay to have two dads no it's not, it's not. like it's not okay to have two dads that's not like that's against the will of God do you know what I mean so 
you could tell him people have two dads, but you can't tell him it's right. It's okay to have two dads. That's the, that's that's just the difference. But we teach him that at home anyway, and he's respectfully understands. But um, but yeah, with Dubai man, it's nice man. Like they don't have push all this agenda on the kids, and everybody's happy to help. You see, in England, like they don't they, they don't want people to get past them. Do you get it? It's like mm. oh, I'll help you, but if if I think it's gonna put you in front of me, I don't want to help you. They don't have that there. They don't, they'll, they'll always put you onto something. Like people you might ever meet them once and they might ring you and say, oh, you know what, you do this, yeah, yeah, I need someone. You might be able to work with my friend. He does this, like they just put you on. It's just good. Mm. I've been there six months. I've made way more connections. I'm bigger, I've signed bigger contracts than I've done in this country in the last seven years. Mm. And I've been there six months. Where that one? I imagine what it's going to be like in another three years where I'm going to be at. So yeah, it's good for stuff like that. It's a nice country. People are respectful. It's so safe. There's no crime at all. Like there's no drama. There's no crime. Hardly any. The only time there's a little bit of crime is where all the tourists are. You know, where people come from England. Because no, yeah, Brits yeah. can't behave themselves nowhere. But even That's there, they true. Be- <laughs> but even there, they behave themselves. Like for the most part, I was in um, a beach club with Charlie Slough the other week. And s- yeah, I'm and like- um, he had. There was a table next to us and it had, it had like, like loads of American people on there. Then there was a table the other side. I was all just chilling, whatever. And then he's like, yo, like I can't, someone's took my cards out of my bag. Have you seen my cards? I'm like, nah. He's like, I don't think I misplaced them. He's like, but I brought some girls over to the table that I knew from back home. He's like, do you reckon I'll be them? I said, no, nah, definitely not. They've got dough. So he's gone upstairs to check the CCTV. Before he's even found out who it is on the CCTV, the police have already worked out who it is, gone to his hotel, arrested him. The guy's still in jail now. So, yeah, I swear down. if you get caught nicking in Dubai, you're finished, bro. You're doing finished. years. Yeah, they don't play a game. Don't come to their country and try and because they take that as a personal insult. You come into our country and trying to insult us by stealing. We don't do that here. And if you get caught, say if I give you ten bag of weed, and they see me give you a ten bag of weed, I'm doing twenty five years in jail. There's no just a ten bag, just a split. If I give you a split, if I'm finished. Yeah, they don't you know, play. I've, don't bring. I've, I've heard about that. Don't bring drugs in their country, bro. They're not. They don't play games. And I love that about it. It's so safe. You know that's why there's not like they have. Um, face recognition so say if they're looking for you mm-hmm. they'll just what's the name they'll just type your name in on a computer and then anywhere you walk they'll be able to find you because there's CCTV everywhere they'll just tell you exactly where you want to come and get you oh it's like that yeah. like that yeah so there's no crime there's no everyone leaves the door open everyone leaves like all oh, Lamborghinis Rolls Royces the keys just in the car just go in the yard like no one locks the cars everything's just open so yeah, it's so safe. Nice. Yo, it's a nice way to live. Oh, that sounds like life on peaceful mode that's yeah, that's what I'm saying bro you're making Dubai sound like dreamland it is dreamland it is Tax free as well. Yeah. <laughs> tax free. free. The really best food, though. The food there's amazing. The sun, everything's just like top of the range. Everything's brand new. The beaches, like you go to the local park and you've got like 10 men there that work there all day, every day. They're just cleaning, they're just sweeping the sides, polishing stuff, like this, the, um, mowing the grass, watering it. It's just, it's just a nice place, man. It's just the next level. So, how much money do you need to live there? Because people give me different answers. Yeah, so you need more than average in the UK. On average, but it depends how you live. So the average in the UK is about thirty three thousand pounds. So I'm say I'm a talking. I'm a saying how much. So say the rent in the UK is probably like seven hundred quid a month, I guess, and like yeah. a normal place, seven hundred quid. You probably yeah. need. That's Birmingham. That is in London way more. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. So it's more like London prices, I'd say. So like, say if you just want to get, okay, say if you want to get like um, uh, what do they call them? Where the bedroom and the kitchen and that's in the same room. Oh, a studio. studio. Studio apartment. You say if yeah. you want to get a studio apartment, nice one, probably £1,500 a month. Oh, sit down. Okay. £1,500 a month. Or you could get like a nice apartment, two grand a month for like a one bed. Oh, what say, about two bed? Let's say I want two bed. Yeah, yeah two bed. Well, mine's a two bed and it's £3,600 a month. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, it's in Dirham's, but it works out £3,600 a month. But then you see what's expensive is the cars. So if you want to get a lease on a car, it's just expensive. Like, just for like a RSQ3, yeah? Mm-hmm. If you get one of them here, probably £900 a month, something. It, over there, it's like £3,000 a month. Yeah, it's yeah. expensive. And they love their cars over there. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They love their But they're cars. expensive cars. Even to buy them over there, like, double the price of beer. It's expensive, yeah. Man. But then fuel's next to nothing. Like I had a Rory the other week, had zero miles when I got it, like zero miles in the tank. Uh-huh. Filled it up, it was like 35 pound. Supreme unleaded, de- supreme unleaded Th- 35? petrol. 35 pound, yeah. <laughs> yeah trying to balance out the car. And it lasts longer as well. I swear the diesel, um, the petrol's better because you fill it up and it lasts a lot longer than it would if it was here. So it must be better quality as well. 40 pound uh, tank, yeah. <laughs> Done in a week, bro. Yeah. 40 pound, that's not even filling my Yaris, bro. And that's a Yaris, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to ask you. From the outside looking in, when you see the highlights of Dubai, you see a lot of women drinking, people just having fun. Now, as a, someone as a Muslim, how do you deal with it or try and stay clear of that? Because 
that could be challenging. Well, I'm far from sinless, first of all. So I'll never make it I'm sinless. I'm far from sinless. Great answer. Um, but I just don't go around in places much. Like, I, I'm, I'm not, like, I do, I do step out every so often. But as a whole, I don't really go to them places. I'm not even interested. Like, I have good brothers there that are on Dean. Um, shout out my boy Tam, Tam Khan. He owns a gym there that I train, and I'm actually fighting on his show. And Tam? He's, Tam mm. Khan is good. Is that the uh, yeah, I see him a lot through that with um, I've seen Tate. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me and him are, like, super close. Shout out Tam. Big up Tam Khan. And um, Tam. he's just a good human being, man. Like, he's just like, but you know what it is? He's like, he's just like one of the lads, but, like, he, he doesn't miss prayers. He don't go weird, put no. himself in certain situations. He just out there says, just like normal having a banner, this and that. We like cuss each other all the time. We have banner, like it's jokes. But you just, you don't see him like, you will never see him step into clubs. You won't see him like around women, this and that. He just does his, like he just keeps, he just keeps to his prayers and just chills with them. And I'm around him most of the time. So when I'm around, man, I'm not even going to say to him, oh yeah, come, let's go here. So it's all about company, man. Like if you're around good company, you're around good people. Do you get it? So that helps a lot. I think if Tom wasn't there, I'd be in a lot more haram mm. stuff than I am. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like discipline. That is. Yeah, he's got guy. good discipline, man. Yeah. But it's hard, man, because there's y'all, there's girl out there like you've never seen. Mm. Ah. There's, yeah, there's girl, you've never seen girl like it. But the way you say the way you say girl is what you say, the, the type yeah. of girl you won't find in the UK. No, you ain't gonna find it. Find them in Birmingham, won't find yeah, them down yeah, the road on so yeah, these girls are different. But the only problem with these girls, <laughs> unless you got money, not interested, but they're just into the ballers and it's real ballers out there. But this girl there, there's enough girl there. There's enough there's enough for everyone, but I don't even I don't, I girl the girl pissed me off anyway, but I don't even like much. Alright, wait, so we're gonna get we're gonna get into that before we answer. As a as a UK tourist, someone is going to go to Dubai and it's bare girl, what would you say to them? What do you mean, how would I miss it? To avoid or even, let's say, they're just trying to get you for your money. It depends what, what you, it depends your intentions, isn't it? If you're yeah. there to go there, most men that, most men them that go to Dubai, they want to go there down to lick down girl anyway. They're not going down there to wife anything. Mm, so they're there, they're there, isn't it? Just show them a lifestyle that you don't even have to give it them, just pretend you've got a certain in it and they'll just free up the hoes, bro. Yeah. We call it, there's a brass, then there's a brass brass. So a brass, a brass brass is a prostitute, she'll just tell you straight. And then a brass is a girl, she's not, a pro- she don't claim she's a prostitute, but if you if you let her on your table, you give her this, you t- take her for food, this and that, she's going to give you a pump up. So she's still a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? So there's a brass and a brass brass, and Dubai is full of brasses. So, full of brass. Yeah. I, was, I listened to, I don't know if you heard about Saudi psychology, mm. Saudi speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, she yeah. was saying Dubai is the last place on earth you would go to find a wife, a, a, ser- a woman who you would take serious. Yeah. Do you believe that? That's kind of mad. I though. think it depends where. I think it's the same as anywhere. I think when you live in England, saying the last place to go to Dubai, I think England's fucking done out, but the girl in England are disgusting. <laughs> At least the girl in Dubai are good looking. Um, <laughs> the, girl, the, girl in England, the girl in England are ugly, bro. But it depends where you go. So, like, if you want to find a good girl, well, if it, well, for me, if I was to look for a girl, I'd look for a Muslim girl. The places you're going to find them is in the mall. That's where they go. They go to the malls, they mm. sit down, they go to coffee shops, this and that. That's that's the place where they are. They don't go to all these beach clubs now. They don't, they don't, that's not their scene. They'll never go in there. So it depends where you go and what you're looking for, isn't it? It's the same anyway. You can find good girls in England. They're just pff, 10 a penny. You never find one. Yeah. Very hard to find them anyway. And all the good okay. ones are ugly, so... All the, fire, all the good ones are ugly. Like, oh yeah, you got you got good qualities, but you're ugly, so obviously you're gonna be good. And then <laughs> all the what's the name? And then all the fire ones have been smacked out. out. We've got to balance it out. Yeah, so it's just long. You just give up. I give up. All right. So you you was on the Sinners podcast recently, mm-hmm. and you were saying the girl there just not feeling it. No, do you know what? Like to be fair, them two girls it was all right, man. That was on there, man. It was they had a lot. Some of the stuff they said I fully agreed with, but then some of the stuff. Yeah, that's for you, an idiot, ain't got a clue. Girl are dumb, man. They don't even understand. They're so naive and entitled. Mm. Not them specific girl. Them specific yeah, yeah. girl was actually all right. But in whole, women are just, in, as a whole, women are just entitled and stupid. I actually find them so dumb. I think, how are you so naive and dumb? And they haven't got a clue. I think, oh my God, all right, whatever. <laughs> is that how you so naive, you know? I feel like the word naive is such a violation. You're so naive, <laughs> it's like you really got, believe you don't know what's going on. You don't even have a clue what's going on. You just <laughs> sat there. You ain't got a foggiest. I think, you're an idiot, man. Shut up. Sorry, is, this, is this coming from experience? I just can see, yeah, experience. I see a girl and I see how they act and what they think. I just think, you're an idiot, man. You're so dumb. Go on, tell us a story about some, just, someone just, you spoke Just common sense, just like normal stuff. Like a girl be like, oh yeah, he's my friend. He's not your friend. He wants to fuck you. Why was a man going to be a friend with a woman? What purpose is, a, what purpose is any man going to have having a woman you as know, a friend? I've, I've always thought like always that. I've always thought like that. Well, there's no it way. It don't make no sense. Let me tell you something. If a man's having a, uh, if a friendship with a girl. I'm trying to... 
Yeah, but even if you're not gonna try, even if you intend, if she's it's, the opposite, you're yeah. gonna take it. Yeah. Well, you're gay. That's of course, you're gonna take it. If she's offering your pom pom. You're gonna say no. So yeah. no, and they're like, no, he's my friend. And I've seen it bare times. Like, I right, ring him now and pretend that like, you want to get with him. Every single time they ring the bridge in and like, oh, they want to get with them. No, like, yeah, right then. Like, obviously the man's like, yeah, I didn't even know you're feeling me like that. Yeah, come now, what are you coming around? So they're so dumb. And then, then, and then some, some of the, some of my bridgings, not even my bridges, but I see my name and they let the girl like bridgings or they let the girl go mobs. Me, do you think my girls like my girl wouldn't even mobs? I've been mobs. Mobs is mad. mad. I just come back from mobs, full of whores. You just came back nah, from Mars. Nah, Mars is. I was bro, in Mars. I, I, like, I, I thought you said someone's private story, and yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. Dif- different girl every snap. And the snap yeah. was like 30 minutes. Of what I'm saying? I was like, right. That's crazy. Yeah, I did. That's crazy. And then they'll be like, oh, you control him, but you don't trust me. I don't trust my nanny mobs. So why would I trust you in mobs? <laughs> Idiot. I won't let my nan go. I be for mobs. <laughs> no, I was with my ex, yeah. She, do you think she wouldn't even ask me to go on a girl's holiday, even if it was to Santa Pay somewhere now? She wouldn't even actually even bother asking me. Oh, you control it. No, I'm just not an idiot. I know what happens on girls' holidays, you're whores. No, not us. That's just the girls you know. No, you're all whores or every single one of you. And or if you're not, one of your friends is a whore. And there's no way you get in a group of girls and none of them are whores in this day and age. Mm, there's always what there's always that even one if and that one's an influence. There's, there's, no, that one's an influence. There's, there's, there's normally one that's good, the rest of them are whores. That's normally what happens. Jeez. But even if there's one, she's bringing man back, so what? Even if my girl was not doing nothing, do you think I'm going to let my girl go on tables with her? Because if her friends are going on tables, that means my girl. So that means the next man's paying for my girl. Are you mad? I pay for my girl, not next man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, nah, but not me. You're you shouldn't even want to go to them places anyway. If your girl wants to go to them places, it's a red flag. What do you want to go there for? And get your booty out and shake it on the, in front of all these men then? True, that's a red flag. Disgusting, bro. You know, speaking of paying though, you said you signed a contract when you landed in the Bible, well, more contracts. What do you actually do apart from boxing? So my contracts are for sponsorships for my boxing. Okay. Yeah, so the sponsorships, so obviously I promote stuff on my social media. I mm. promote stuff when I fight. Um, I've just started a crypto, um, not crypto, I've just started a, um, mine's gone blank, trading platform. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I've not launched it yet, so I'm trying to push everyone to my Telegram before I show them exactly how I make though. Because a lot of people always ask me how I make money, but I make money online anyway. I've just not really posted it, I've just been doing it like on a low key thing, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to start really pushing it. So my, my link's in my bio on my Insta. So if anyone wants to, what's the name? Work it, get to know how I do it, then click, click, the, click the link to my free Telegram group and I'll show you. What, what's the Insta, bro? Say it. Ty Mitchell Official. Nice. Yes, yeah, so T-Y Mitchell Official, yeah. So as an influence boxer, is there anyone specific you would like to fight? Yeah, it just Virgo. I don't like him, bro. Let the guy is always in the Love Island comments. Yeah, he's an idiot, <laughs> oh bro. God, Can't stand him. It's from, yeah, it's from these ends as well, originally. It's from Birmingham? Yeah, originally, yeah. Say swear. Yeah, say yeah swear. your people then, bro. That's it, your people. I don't know who this guy is, I'll be honest. What's the beef? What's the beef? Idris? I just don't like him. He's a bully, bro. So, like, you see, one thing I done was when I came over to this side of the boxing, I said, look, I don't want to fight the other boxers, yeah? Because the other boxers in there. I said, I don't want to fight the other boxers or people that can box. I don't want to fight these YouTubers. That's bullying. I'm not a bully. I'm not gonna come over I and stop I, I don't think they'll fight you anyway, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't. But even so, I'm not gonna call them out and embarrass myself. But he's come over now, he's undefeated as a pro, 12 and 0 as a pro. Come to this influencer boxing, I trying to call out these YouTubers. I'm like, bro, you're a bitch, man. You're a bully, bro. But I'm calling them out. He didn't want no part of it with the same weight, everything. He didn't want no part of it. So I've had to hound him down as pressure him. Now he's like accepted. Now he's saying he'll fight me. But in, the, in his head, he knows he can't. He knows I'll smack him over. So. Send him a message. Send Yo, you little bitch. I'm going <laughs> to smack you, little midget. He knows anyway. I sent him bare message, bare podcast. He's actually, he's, I've just hounded him down till he's like, to the point where my dad... Um, Bunch of security for all the shows. Yeah. And my dad seen him, he FaceTime me and then put him on FaceTime. So I said, Yo, he's saying now you little bitch. But I was luckily I was in Gambia doing some charity work. And I couldn't swear because the orphans was there, but I was like, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> so I'm trying to walk over. I'm like, yo, what are you saying now, you little bitch? But I couldn't, you know what I mean? So he got like, he got off lightly, I was gonna send for him. But I was on live with him literally just yesterday on TikTok sending for him. Just oh, it, I've made him I've screen recorded, I've made him accept it on live and I posted it on my Insta earlier. So yeah, so so what? So besides Idris, the guy, is, was he on Love Island? He was on Love Island. He got yeah. kicked out after like a week because I won't That's what I'm saying. How is he so, how is he still, he is, is his no, name still around? Because he just comments on everything. He spams all accounts nonstop. That's all it is. He's, he's, he's irrelevant. Active. All right, would you ever fight someone that likes of KSI? Logan Paul. Yeah, I'd fight these because these lot can actually box a little bit. You think KSI can box? You think KSI Co- like, can compared, box? Com- box? Compared, compared to like these other YouTubers that haven't got a clue, like KSI actually knows what he's doing a little bit. Do you know what I mean? He's not like, mm. he's not rubbish. He can, he knows how to, he knows how to box. Do you know what I mean? Whether or not he's mm. a great boxer, none of them are. Otherwise they'd be world champion pros. 
mm. um, and I'd get good money for it. But it wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel like I was bullying if I did it. And also, he bullies other people. He's, he's way better than, say, Swarms, and he bad Swarms. I wouldn't even feel yeah. sorry beating him up. But these lads never fight me for two reasons. One, because you know I'd smoke them. And two, I'm not a big enough profile. So they're thinking it's lose, lose, you're a nobody, and you'll beat me. It's not going to do nothing for him. <laughs> do, well, do, I hear that. Do you know what I mean? So I understand. I, I know my position. I'm not a big time like these lads. So I don't even try and chase something. that. Like what, what good is it for them? It doesn't make business sense for them. Um, but I'll fight any of these lot, bro. I don't care, bro. I just want to get paid, bro. I'm not even bothered about it. Yeah. I just want to get paid. That's what I'm here for. How, how much money is in this influencer boxing thing? Because I'm, I'm a bit I, I, I heard it's pretty good recently. Yeah, it's it is. It's good. good. Basically, let me put it into perspective. I'm going to talk in general terms. I don't want to be specific. But say for a boxer that's a British champion, say, mm. and he boxed for a British title. If you're just like a normal person, not like a superstar, just like a normal average boxer, decent, he'd probably, probably get paid 20, 30 grand for the fight. Mm -hmm. um, he does 12 three minute rounds and he's British champion professional these lot are doing three two minute rounds on a little influencer show and probably getting paid the same if not more yeah. is that just for the fight or is that's that just, including sponsorships no, see, that's well? all separate if you've got your own sponsors that's oh. all more XX I did right. heard what's his name that's the guy what? from Liverpool Tony Bell you. he said he wasn't really making that much yeah that's like, why that. didn't make him fight yeah, yeah. Tony, Tony Bell, he said, on the diary to your park, he said for the first few fights, he wasn't even making a lot. Yeah, no, he didn't. Yeah. He said he ain't, he said even after the, even after he won the world title and stuff, he said he wasn't really financially secure for his family. He said he's only after the two David Hay fights yeah, that made him dope. Oh, and, he, and he said, um, next and day he checked his bank account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a mill or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, with what's the name as well, I think the Usyk fight, he got paid well, so... He's done well. His last three fights made his career, but he's saying, look, I, he'd, 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 he'd boxed how many times? British title, European title, world That's title. Imagine. And, and only still just now. Exactly. So, then, so, so why, do you think, why do you think boxing isn't bringing in as much money as influencer boxing? So you can't get paid on... The only way you can get paid is if people want to watch your fight. Mm. And obviously people want to watch your fight, but there's no way like the YouTubers and, uh, and these like... They've got so much more revenue that they bring to the boxing because they've got so many more fans. Like most boxers... I've only got like, I know, yeah, I've probably had 100K followers, over 100K followers for like over a year, yeah. And I don't even box, really, to get it. And these these British champions, most British champions have probably got 50K followers. Do you know what I mean? So it's just all about being out there. You have to learn. One thing I learned from um, a while, years ago is that boxing has nothing to do with how good you are. It's to do with how well-known you are. Tommy Fury is not a world champion, but he's made way more than most world champions already. Just because if mm. you, you, his status is known, he's, he's done well for himself and fair play to him. That's my dog as well. I, I got a lot of love for him, but he's done well for himself. For his ability for where he is at the minute, he's very raw, he's still a novice. My man's made millions already. Yeah, I saw that. Mm. He has, how many fights has he had? I think he's had like seven, eight. And and all of them have been not as... Yeah, none, none of them have been, been and serious and name fighters. And, and, and then when... A, perfect example, I think he got paid like 20 grand for his first pro fight, yeah? Yeah. Which is big money anyway for, for most people get like two grand. So you already got like oh, a big first. Yeah, yeah. I think you probably got about maybe probably fifteen grand. I don't not sure, but it wouldn't have been more than was, 20. This, was this before Love Island? This is before Love Island. Before yeah. Love Island. So he boxed like a journeyman, four round out, and then yeah, what's the name? He come out after Love Island, box another journeyman, same level, everything, got paid three hundred bucks. Just because, see what I'm saying? So just from oh. being known, you get a big, big difference. Do you know what I mean? So the Fury name, Love Island, Molly May. See what yeah. I'm saying? Them lot have smashed it, bro. Fair play to them. They come out of Love Island. No, I don't think anyone's come out of Love Island and made as much as them two. They've really and stayed, yeah, they, and stayed together as yeah, well. Yeah, stayed together. They've just had, had a baby. Had a, had a baby yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, they, they clear, you know, clear, clear. Yeah. And what did, what did Molly May get? Pretty little thing. Think, oh, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. she's big, she's clear. Big clear. Yeah, Massive big clear. clear. Yeah, so fair play to them, man. So I'm happy for them. But that's what it is with boxing. It's to do with how well known you are, who wants to see you fight. You can be the best in the world. I know some fighters that are sick. But no one knows them. They don't get paid. They fight. They've got world titles. But because they're not big personalities and they just box and that's it. Mm. They can have all the world titles. If you're not a big name, you're not a big name. So what advice would you give to the younger boxers then? What would you say to them to basically I'd, increase their profile, get more? You involved? have to be relevant, and it's hard because it's hard to be relevant in this day and age without being cringy and trying to just copy other people. It's hard to be original in this day and age because everybody's online. Everybody's got their own narrative. Everyone's got their own what they're trying to do. Their own niche. So it's hard to try and be. It's, it's hard to stand out and be original. So it's hard, but you have to do something to be out there. You have to get your name out there one way or another. You just have to just try and be relevant. The more relevant you are, the more you're going to get paid. Simple mm -hmm. as that. Whether you're good or not, if you're relevant and people want to see you fight, you'll get paid. It's funny because I remember hearing rumors that Swarms got paid like fifty bags for that fight with KSI. That fight with KSI and that last minute too. I don't know how true that is. I don't know. But I was just That's thinking, not bad though. 50 grand for the first fight, three minutes. First, and, and he wasn't on like a two-week notice as well. Bro, mm. he didn't even last long in that fight. He lasted not even around. 
even that Panera guy as well. He was yeah. Oh yeah, he was whack. I was I was actually there that time still. Oh, yeah. Not worth it. I didn't pay for it, but it's not worth yeah. it. So like so okay, <laughs> if you're allowed to speak about this, this fight coming up, how much do you think you'll get paid for that? I ain't got a clue. Imagine this, yeah. This is how much I love time here. This is how close we are, yeah. Yeah. I've not even asked him. I've not even asked him. I just said, he just told me, he said, he, this is how much love he's got for man, yeah. All he right. said, look, I'm putting a show. He wasn't going to put a show on. He goes, I'm going to put a show on your main event. And he goes, I'm going to raise your profile from doing this in Dubai with all the influencers. That when you go on Misfits next, they have to pay you more. Because they're going to raise your profile. So that's a love, innit? And I, even if, so I'm doing it, I'd have just done it anyway. But I know he'll pay me right. So I don't even need to ask him. That's how much I trust him. I just said, yeah, like, oh, cool. I've never even spoke, we've not even spoke about the person. And I don't need to, because I know him as a person. What, when, when, whatever he pays me is what he'll be right, and he'll be within the budget of what the show, whatever he could afford to pay me, that's what he'll pay me. I don't even need to know whether it's a grand or a million. It's whatever was in the budget of the fight, and that's what he could afford to pay me. So that's it. I don't need to ask him. And that's, that's rare. That's, that's, like, that's, 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 that's a, a real friend. Need, that is, that's yeah. rare because with anyone else, I want to know one game paid. How when when's it going into my bank? How are you pay me? Everything. <laughs> when's it going into? <laughs> yeah, bank? I need to know because I don't the trust specifics. people. I don't trust people. But with him, I don't need to ask him. I just know whatever it will be, mm. it'll be honest. So that's it. So class finished. That's crazy. So what? So what? This next fight, you saying you are smacking him? Pick, smacking him. But pick around. Round. Imagine this second, press conference right now. Second round. Second round. A bit uppercut as well. Uppercut. I'm gonna watch that fight now. You know, watch, 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 watch that fight. fight. How about that? What was it, yo? See your new podcast. You said it's gonna second <laughs> round uppercut. Second round uppercut, bro. Remember I said it. You know what's funny? It's, this is coming out after you fight. So. Oh yeah, see, we'll see them. We'll, we'll find out. Nah, yo, I find a way to put this before the you're fight. Gonna, you're gonna before the yeah, fight. I mean, if it comes out after the fight, I'll be like, you recorded it after. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put this before the fight. Yeah. Say it no more. Say it no more. So, yeah. All right, so just on that, yeah. So. Why is it you decide not to train when really truly? We both know you should be training. I don't like it. Don't you feel like you could just be better? Yeah. Like 100%. you could be amazing. You've got this natural talent in boxing. Yeah. So I just, just, just. You see what it is? As long as I win, that's all that matters, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not. <laughs> because I think, yeah, this is what I think, yeah. I think I could trade dead hard, yeah, sacrifice my life, be on a strict diet, miserable diet. Pissed off for how many weeks training this and that. Have an absolute amazing performance and win. Or I could still live my normal life and still win and just not box is good. I've still have a way I win's a win. When you look back at it, you're gonna, it's gonna say a win. No one cares how you win. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, I'm here for the money. I'm not here for the world titles, but I'm just here to get paid. So as long as I win, I get paid. It doesn't matter. I don't care if people think I'm a sick box or not anymore. As long as I'm getting paid and I'm winning, that's what I'm All yeah. right. So if you was to lose, what would you say? Would you say it's because I didn't train? No, I say lost, I don't make excuses. If you beat me, beat me. That's not fair. My opponent, they'll be like, "Well, you should have trained then." And I if, then if I beat you, then what? Like it's not fair. Now. I won't make excuses. Yeah, you beat me better than me. That ain't gonna happen. Now. That no, I got. Mm. No, no, no. Yeah, no. So yeah, it just is what it, I just like living. I'm just. I, I don't know. I just like to live life, innit? How old are you now, bro? Thirty two. Yeah. You still could box for a very long time. <laughs> you still could right. box to start a pro career. It's how, hard, how, man. How was Tyson Fury? He's 34. You still could... Still yeah, but Tyson's 34. I thought, I thought older Tyson was older than that. <laughs> 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 I thought he was in his 40s or something. 34, 35. Um, <laughs> I thought he was 40s, bro. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, bro. But, um, no, do you know what it is? He's already been He's already been up through the rank. He's been boxing since a kid, so it takes years to get... You can't just like, all right, I'm going to box. It, it takes camp after camp to get ring fit, to get to that 12-round stage. It's hard to get 12-round fit. Then you've got to go through the rankings. And then by this time, is I'm slowing down. You've got these kids that are 25, 26 coming up strong in their prime. It's going to be hard for me to keep up with them. Talent can only get you so far. So mm. Fair enough. You have to just be realistic. So I just said, you know what? Let me just live soft life and just get paid. That's yeah, soft, soft life. life. Yeah. So where is it? I've heard, well, in fact, I've seen, I've seen, um, I don't know who's part, I think it's Sinus, where he said, yo, you grew up through the ranks, punching up, well, to say sparring, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, two of the best boxers in the world. Now, for someone with a lot of talent, where, where, where who's this praise from? Where does this talent all come from? Or was you just born with it? Allah, bro. <laughs> Comes from Allah. My dad was a fighter. So mm. my dad boxed, so he's naturally in me anyway. My dad was um, boxing for all of his life, and then he got his own gym. So he's naturally in me, but I, I, it's definitely not from hard work, bro. I'm not going to lie. I don't train that hard. I never have done. Um, so... It's got to be, it's just God-given. I've got a talent, I just know how to box. But remember, I was boxing from our seven, so I grew up in the gym. I've always been in the You've gym. Always been Whether or not I've trained hard, I've always been in the gym. So, I say, you know what, I say I haven't trained hard, fair enough, but I've trained for a long time. 
you know what I mean? So from seven, yeah. I've trained for most of my life. So I just know how things work. I just know what to look for. I know when you're going to do for a shot, how to move my feet, what to set, how to set shots up, how to avoid shots. It's just something I've just grown up doing. So what was it like fighting, fighting Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury? Because those are the two of the best. True. One of the best. <laughs> one, one of the best. Wow, one <laughs> of the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, do you know what it is? I, I've, I've sparred Tyson for years, so it's just like, and he's my mate, like me and him are like actually good, good friends. Oh, so yeah. Shout out yeah, Gypsy King. My, yeah, that's my dog. So some most of, I, I, most of the time I go see him, I will just chill at each other. We don't really do, we don't all we'll train. We never hardly spar anymore. I've not sparred him properly for years. I think we've done some body sparring a couple of years ago. But it was just, it just was what it was. Remember when I was sparring him, he wasn't punching as hard then as he was now. So I know when I've got to spar him again for the Usyk fight, He's gonna be punching a lot harder. Mm. Mm. Um, but before he was like, he was he's more of a hit and a mover. He could definitely hit. Like, don't get me wrong, he still hurt when he caught me. That's what I thought. Because how tall is that? Six foot. Six nine. Yeah. Six, that's a big man's punch. That is, and he's yeah. heavy as well. Yeah, oh, no, he can punch. But no, like since he's been with Sugar Hill and he dropped and he sits down on his shots and rips him in. Now he's punching like the mm. rest of them. Anthony Joshua is not technically good with his footwork and stuff so because I'm quick I can step around him a lot quicker but when he hits bro my man can punch bro like he really does hit hard Tony Bow you hits mad hard as well yeah yeah he punches hard me and him sparred him for the Usyk fight so we did, we did bear rounds and we got into it man but he can fight bro he's good, out, out of the three who's the best Tyson I knew he was going to say that yeah. who's last there's no uh, they differ man I'm not even going to say like ah oh, because it's a completely different spa so mm -hmm. like with AJ it was hard because I was fasting at the time, so I had no energy anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was unfit and I was fasting. But um, he, he's, he's good, man. Like AJ is definitely, listen, he's a world champion. Don't go for a world champion from being rubbish. Do you know what I mean? I just think his biggest thing is his mind's let him down. I think from the Ruiz fight, he's never really believed in himself as much and he's a bit too scared about getting hit. And I think when you're bothered about getting hit, when you get hit, it hurts a lot more. Because when you're already thinking, I don't want to get hit, don't want to get hit, mm. then you get hit, it's a bit more like, oh. Whereas if you don't care anything, you can't hurt me anyway. It's different. And I think you used to have that mentality. I think his mind is a, a bit of his weak point. Whereas that's Tyson's strongest point. I've seen Tyson in camps. I've been with him in camps for years. He's headbutting punch. People are hitting him and he's headbutting them, laughing at him, saying, come on, hit me. And he's headbutting the punch. Yeah, he's a lunatic. Yeah, yeah. And when you're getting off on Wilder shots, why can anyone else? I was thinking the one where he got slumped to Wilder and got on like the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the just got on like that. He's like that, bro. He's just in him, bro. Like he just got no quit in him. And bro, you know what's mad, yeah? They always say like, you can tell when someone's fighting that like, they've been through stuff in life and they've just got that bit ruggedness in him, you know, and you've had a hard upbringing, you just got that bit got extra. That dog in him. He's like, I don't know where it come from because I had a good upbringing. He goes, nothing wrong with my upbringing, I had a normal upbringing. He goes, I don't know where it come from because I just don't like losing. So I just get up and think, come on then. So yeah, I don't know where it comes from. He's definitely God given. Um, but yeah, man, he's a special fighter. But Tony Bell, you when I spotted him, it was just a hard fight because he's very rough, rugged, a cockshaw game. Mm, so, Liverpool man as well. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we was literally, we was having it, me and him. But remember, I spotted him just after I seen him knock David out twice. I'm thinking, oh, here we go. <laughs> and once I hit me, yo, bro, that shook me to my boots. I was like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> shook me to my boots. I come back, I broke his rib door in the, sec in the second time we fought, just before the fight. I didn't know, he didn't tell me to laugh. He's like, yeah, there's a video of it on my Insta actually. He's like, yeah, he broke my rib before the fight. Oh, sad. Oh, yeah, sad. So we had, and he still had to fight? Yeah, he still had to box with the broken, he boxed Usyk with a broken rib. No one knew because he, he didn't even tell me. Oh, um, yeah. But he was good. Dillian White's very good. He's dangerous. I don't like spying him, man. It's hard work spying him because he's so dangerous. Like, He'll just, you could just be throwing a combination, he'll just start laying off. Normally, you'll block, block, throw back. He'll just start throwing when you're throwing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lunatic, and you don't want to get hit with one of them. He hit me with one shot, bust my nose. I thought, oh, this is long, this. But I, I enjoy spying him, but it's dangerous. You just have to be alert when spying him, man, because one shot off Dilly and one right hook, yeah, I'm on my back. Mm -hmm. so, with, so, with these boxers, what kind of mindset do they all have? Because they're all. Everybody's everybody different. Knows yeah, it. so everybody's different. Um, so, what's, what are some of the, the key traits you've noticed in each fighter? Just hunger, man. Just hunger. They just really have to just focus in and they just dial in when it comes to fighting. Like, obviously, in the biggest, the highest shalom, obviously, I've only really been around Tyson. When Tyson, and I'm just as close to Dillian as I'm Tyson. Like, they're my dogs. Like, they come to my fights. They walk me out to my fights. Like, we go to, I chill at the houses. Like, this, we're, we're like family with each other. So, when them two box, it was horrible for me. I didn't even go to the fight. That's how bad it was. I was like, I'm not going to go and sit in your corner and then I look like I'm against these or sit mm. with them. I said, I'm just not going to go. So I, apart, from, so obviously that's probably the biggest fight Dylan's been in. I've been with Tyson to a few big fights, and he just doesn't give a shit, bro. Like I don't know what, like when he boxed um, Klitschko for the world title, mm. it was in Germany, 
And he's rang me like before we're going to the arena. We're going to the arena in like 20 minutes. Rang me, I'll come to my room. So I'm thinking oh, he probably wants to talk about something. I don't know, maybe he's a bit, maybe he's a bit. He wanted to show me videos of some cats doing some funny shit on YouTube. He's there laughing. I'm like, bro, you're about to go fight. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's in a bit. And like he just, and his demeanor didn't change the whole time. He was just the same laughing, joking, just went out there, boxed, said, yeah, I told you I was going to beat him up. Like, he just doesn't care. Yeah, Whereas with some people, he's there for a laugh, man. Yeah, bro, he don't care, bro. He generally. And you're like, you tosser. Yeah, you little dosser. But like, he's the person where like, sometimes he'll come with me and link my bridgings and he'll just come and sit with us to just chill like he's nothing. Like he doesn't, you don't feel like, it doesn't make you feel like he's better than you or nothing. He's just normal, like no, yeah. yeah. That's the best kind of people. That's still. the best. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why the evil. people love him, man, because he doesn't. He's just there with the people, and he just like there's a video of him where he's pissed up abroad, and he did. Taxi driver won't let him in. He tried to kick the taxi door or something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it. and like even though it's bad, yeah, like everyone just thought typical Brett abroad. Any bollocks, just talking. <laughs> he's just a normal guy. He doesn't think he's something he's not. So fair play to him. Like, but some people they get very quiet and they're very into the self and they very. To- um, Tunnel visioned and focused and stuff. Everyone just has different things, but they're all just like very sure of themselves. Like there's no mm. doubt. Like I'm gonna go out there and make it happen. So yeah, I think that's the, the mindset of a champion. No second guessing. Okay, so no, I, like I want to speak on the one thing you mentioned. AJ doesn't like getting hit. And since the is it the first fight with Ruiz or the second fight with Ruiz? First when he got dropped. He got dropped. He hasn't been kind of the same because even after he lost against Usyk in the second fight, yeah, and he had that massive tantrum that was. No, yeah, everywhere on the yeah, and you haven't really heard much from him since. Yeah, I felt sorry for him, man. Um, Did you think he won that fight? No, I don't think he won either fight. I think he mm-hmm. boxed the same in both fights. This one, this I don't know. I think it's his team because I sparred him for the Usyk fight. That's when I sparred him for the second fight. Well, I, for I, the second I, fight, I wanted right? to spar him for the first fight, and he said that they was going to shout me never. Like they banged my dad. I said I oh, won't ever spar and never shout at me. Cool. When in that last, the second fight, he rang me. Give him good work, bro. Like my man said, my like my man was after the after we sparring, he come back. Goes, I'm gonna get you back. I said, yeah, don't worry. Mm-hmm. So we already planned to spar again, and then they just never asked me back. Now I know him as a fight would have wanted me in back in camp, but maybe I think his camp thought, now nah, man, we give him too much good work. He's gonna start second guessing himself and make him think oh, he can't do it. Okay. When really nah, you have to like, give him hard spar because the fight's not gonna the fight's gonna be hard. Facts. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So and from that I kind of thought, oh, I don't know. Like now nah. and then when I watched him fight, he boxed better than the first fight, but not much. Um, so I don't think he won um, and I felt sorry for him you know when he had that tension I, mean, I just think he was having a bit of a mental breakdown like he tried so hard and it, it hurt him a lot it was yeah. sad to see I him you, 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 you could tell though you could tell his, mm. and for like his team as well should have said something you know, when yeah, he, yeah. You know what he had the bouts and he dropped the bouts well, that was massively yeah. disrespectful like someone yeah. said yo listen just come man yeah and I think, do you know what it is? I think he was that upset and annoyed at the time. He just frustrated, just didn't know what to do. Like he was mad at boxing, mad at everything. And boxing's a hard sport, man. You give your life and your soul to it, man. You train, you train so hard and there's things you've worked your whole life on. And you've got this guy that just took it away from you and you, just, you thought you did enough. And that was the problem with his corner. They kept telling him he was in front when he wasn't. The same thing that happened in his previous fight. I think he should have stayed with Robert Kraken, I think. Um, but that's his own choice. I just feel like, yeah, I felt sorry for him, man. It was, it was sad to see because he's a nice guy, man. Yeah. Like me... In the gym, like obviously me and him ain't friends. Obviously he knows that I'm very close with Tyson and Dillian, but like he was respectful in the gym. I spoke to him, he spoke back. He even reposted me on his Insta to say, you're like good work on that. And he's a nice person. He is a generally, I don't think it's an act for the camera. I think he's generally been braised well and he's a nice person. But um, yeah, man, I just feel like he, he was just sad to see, man. So hopefully he'll come back. I think he, listen, he's still a world-class fighter, but you get elite fighters. And I think he's in, he's, he's got a chance of beating anybody Apart from obviously, I think U6 is too cute for him, and I think Tyson's just far too good for him. I don't. He's gonna fight Wilder. I, I can see him. I can see a very plausible way he beats Wilder, but I just think Wilder's gonna chin him. I think mm. Wilder chins U6. I think Wilder beats. I think Wilder beats anybody that he fights apart that from Tyson. That power is mad. Tyson said he's never seen nothing like it. He said he's freakish. He said he's just you just in front of him next minute you're on the floor waking up thinking <laughs> what's going on. He said no. So and I just think he's very cocksure of himself. Wilder, he will he will commit and throw a punch and. If while if AJ was hitting um, Usyk and he's slower, Wilder would definitely hit Usyk. And when Wilder hits Usyk, he'll put him out. And I think the same with AJ. I just think he just hits too hard, man. Unless AJ rushes him straight away and hits him with a big shot and knocks him out, that's definitely plausible because AJ can punch. Mm-hmm. But I think AJ, I think they're going to be too standoffish. And then when Wilder lets go, it's going to be good night Vienna. I think. Do you think Wilder's got technique? Because I've seen a lot of his fights. He's, don't get me wrong, he's got that knockout power, but a lot of it's just. So he's not, a, he's not a sick technical boxer, but if you know, he doesn't swing until he's already got the opponent hurt. He doesn't just swing. Yeah, okay, I always say that, yeah. Yeah, and he throws it, and he's got a lot better technique than what people think. You can't get, you, you can't beat the people he's beat. You can't even hit Tyson, 
Because Tyson is hard to hit. You can't hit him throwing a bag of, a bag of rice at him. It's hard to hit. <laughs> so my man was hitting him a lot. He's a lot better technical and he's very quick on his feet. He's very, he makes up ground quick. So he's a lot better than people think. You think that um, just being able to punch, because there's a lot of people that can punch, just punch. You have to be able to know how to set it up and he obviously sets shots, shots, shots up well. Shots, yeah. So he's a lot better than what people think. Would you ever spar with Wilder? Yeah, I've fought anyone, but I don't care. <laughs> Let's get it. If he did, if I died, I did, innit? <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked to get it from him on the chin. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but on the chin. I'm definitely, hey, I'm definitely spoiling for... him if he wants it, 100%. Yeah, let's swear, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be preferred. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the experience, to say I've done it. That's it for the experience. experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I didn't drop me anyway. I'm bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if lot I've ever dropped me. That's a good thing. So you that's my thing. Never, 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 never been that's dropped. A, that's, a, that's a serious post. That I've is. been hurt. I've been wobbled a few times, but I, was, I never dropped. Go on. He's wobbled. Been, yeah, he's wobbled you. Um, you think you wobbled me. You bell you. He, he wobbled, I got in cold. Like he'd done a round with someone else and I've got in. And then in the start of the round, just whoom. Over and right, right to my finger, I went like this. When you're right, I went, yeah, just started, I was, I was furious because I started coming at him. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to get my, trying to get it back. And then it was a spar after that, I really got him back. But yeah, no, he wobbled me, man, shook me to my boots. And Huey Fury's also done the same thing in France one time, shook me. He didn't even know he'd done it though. I was like, oh, did you see me? Uh, Huey Fury. Who's that? Tyson's cousin. Oh, his cousin. Yeah. Hit me, boom. Like, and I just like, wobble, I was like, it wasn't like a wobble, but I kind of stepped back, like, uh, but they yeah. didn't even notice it. So I started coming forward for each other, trying to blend it. But they're the two people that have uh, wobbled me. But I've, uh, I've been hurt. I've been hurt quite a few times. Like, they've all hurt me. Like, they've all caught me. And I've been thinking, like, I don't want to get hit with that again. If you get hit with too many of them, you're going to go over. Dillian's hurt me a few times. Um, Tyson's hurt me. They've all hurt me, but yeah, I ain't been dropped, so that's my claim to fame. All right, and I'm, and no, I'm like four weights thing. below them. So. Four weights, but I was thinking that they're yeah. like massive heavyweights. Yeah, so, yeah, huge. how do you think? Because I've seen this with a lot of fighters, especially in UFC. How does being knocked out affect a man? I've never been knocked out. I can tell you. Now, I was saying, even just being around boxers, you've been knocked out in the combat. Before. I think everybody's different. Some people they get knocked out, then they get so scared of getting knocked out, they keep thinking about it, and it makes them like a bit gun shy, they don't, a gun ho where they don't really fall shots because they don't want to miss and they get knocked out. Some fires, it doesn't affect them. It makes them more hungry, think, right, now nah, you're definitely getting it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Serious. Yeah. Got there enough. I was just going to ask, before, before, before we close it off, I want to know about your like, upbringing before 18. Because I seen a podcast and I was like, oh, I didn't know you were. You said you had a single mom at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was on benefits. Yeah, so. How was that? Yeah, so I grew up in a in a in a I won't say a posh area, but a nice area. I grew up in a village in the country in like a countryside of Derby. So it's nice. Everyone was just like normal. Everyone, all most people had two parents. They went to work, come back, yeah. just a normal. And it was nice. It was very safe, nice upbringing. But I live with my I got an older sister, older brother, me, and then a little brother. So there's us four in the house with my mom, and we'd see my dad every weekend and stuff. But like it was just us four. She didn't work. She had four kids, and one of them was a lot younger. Um, she's on benefits, so it was broke. Like, we didn't have, like, compared to everyone else, like, it was tough. Like, a lot of the time, the uh, electric cards would run out, we'd have to, like, press the emergency, that would run out, then we'd have to use the, the, the gas cooker to try and heat up the house off for some light. Better times we'd run out of milk, this and that, but we had good grandparents. Our grandparents live a mile away, they'd always come and drop off food and stuff like that if we needed it, but it was hard, man. Like, you don't, you don't really realize at the time because you're a kid, but yeah, it was definitely broke. But everything's perspective, though. I say he was broke, yeah, as a kid. I was broke compared to the other people, but everything's perspective. So now I just come back from Gambia mm. and I was out there in the villages feeding these people that literally just live in a desert with like mud huts and stuff. Mm. I was living like an absolute king growing up compared to them. So everything is perspective. But as a whole, in, in, in English terms, compared to most people that was living around, they we was broke. We couldn't afford like brand new stuff all the time. But how I was living compared to the kids in Gambia was living like millionaires. So like I say, everything's perspective. But we was broke in comparison. Mm. Um... But then I moved to my dad's when I was 10. So... Why did you meet to your dad's? I was always a daddy's boy, man. Yeah, yeah. I was shook of him because I was always naughty. So he was always beating me when I was young. But I always, <laughs> wanted, to, I always wanted to be with my dad, man. I don't know. Um, I just liked it more at my dad's. Um, so I just, yeah, I just moved to my dad's with my dad and stepmom. My dad's never had no kids live with him. And my stepmom was young. There's 10 years of difference. And my dad was like probably like 34 at the time. My stepmom was like 24. 24 yeah. at the time. Now looking after the kids. Like, yeah, like there's 10 years gap between them. So looking at it now, she was younger, so she never had no kids or nothing at the time. So I, they did like they looked after me like there was everything like there was a food always food in the house like I had everything I needed. But they just I was just on my own all the time. So I went from a house of like me and sharing a room with my brothers and always people in the house and noise to just being in a bigger house 
with nothing. Like, it was just, like, quiet. Like, I'd just be by myself all the time. So I was very into myself. I'd just play my PlayStation in my room. I was just, like, a bit of a loner. And I think from that kind of shaped how I was from today, like, I was always by myself, mm. coming, going to school, or secondary school, like, I lived there, and I was just by myself. And then I um, went to jail as in a f- cell by myself for years. So I've really spent most of my life by myself. Even now, I'm always by myself. When I'm in Dubai, I'm by myself in my yard 90% of the time, so... Do you not feel lonely? Nah, it's my comfort. I always it's hard because obviously I want to get married, I want to have more kids and stuff, but I just struggle with relationships because I'm so used to being alone. Mm. Like I just find mm. that I just the thought of being with someone forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Long man, but do I've got you, to have, do you ever like speak to them about that? Like there are times I might need my space. Yeah, I tell them, um, but like, but like, when people need a space, I need space for like a month. <laughs> when I need my space most of the time, do you get it? But maybe I just ain't met the right one. Maybe I just don't like the one enough to be around them enough. But I don't know. You know what? It's a quick one, quick one, because I've I've been asked this. So, let's say you found your wife or whatever. Would you sleep in separate beds or the same bed? See me, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I'd love to have a oh. big house, and then I've got our bed, and I got my own room. I've also said the same yeah. something like that. I can't lie, my girl said the same thing, and I was like, "Raw, that's low key a vibe, though." <laughs> no, I, 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 she should always want to stay with me, though. Yeah, th- this is what no, I mean. No, you've got your room, you've got our room, and I've got my own room. Not you've got your room. room. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, but I like, choose. <laughs> she's like, "Oh no, she she wants her own room." Then we've got our room. Then I'm like, "Yo, then I'm gonna want my own room as well." So now it's all no. I'll be like, "We've got our room, and I've got my own room." That's, <laughs> I, that's how I would say it is, yeah. <laughs> First of all, who's paying the bills in here, me or you, but you want your own room? Oh, it's my house. I pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking I'm going to have my own room anyway because my whole setup's going to be in there. Yeah. So you can have our room as yours when I'm not there. Yeah, kind yeah. Of thing, but. but I don't know. I say that, but then I, but I do like my own space. I, do you know what it is? I don't even know if I'd want my own room. I'd have my own bedroom. I'd probably have one bedroom, but then I'd have my own room, like the boy, like my, like my whatever room, let's like say a room that I just chill in, got my PlayStation in there. or Not that yeah. I ever play it, but just uh, my little like man cave. I see. Mm, I see yeah. if I want to just chill in there, just chill in there, and then want to go better, go better. Or if I don't want to go better, I'll just stay in there, innit? <laughs> but I, I, I think right. just to make an actual a whole bedroom for myself and maybe a bit much, but I'd have a man cave. And so if I felt like not, and, if, and if I felt like not going back to bed, then I would. But 100%. yeah, I think it's healthy, man. I think it's healthy. Serious. Especially if you got like three or four wives, like I'm gonna have and be sick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 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 <His> smile. <yeah. laughs> that was always like you're allowed four wives. Yeah, as a Muslim, like four wives. That was like old girls always ask me, "What do you want four wives? Are you allowed four wives? Do you want four wives?" I said, "If someone says to you, you can have one million pound or four million, what are you taking?" <laughs> 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 I'm gonna take. You. Nah, but but in 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 realistic terms, nah, I probably just have one wife. It's just how I've been raised. I'd yeah. like to have the thought of having two. I won one four. That's headache, man. But two, yeah, two sounds good. But it's hard these days, man. All these girls. I was thinking. I, I seen. I seen. Um, a man asked a Muslim woman, um, "Are you happy to be second wife?" And one of the ladies was like, "No, because I want all the attention to myself." Yeah, girls, bro. Do you, do you think Muslim, bro? It's hardly ever they accept. They're like, no, they can't do nothing about it. Once you marry, you just take a second wife. They're not even allowed to divorce you anyway for it. But oh, so even if you was to just go and take a second wife, yeah, they can't. can't. No, nah, because they'll go to the. To the, to the uh, imam and say, I want to get divorced. I'm like, why? The black guy took a second wife. The black kiss his rights. Like, he's not done nothing around. Go back to your husband. What are you doing? Swear. But they can, what they can do is put it in a contract you before you get married that you can only get oh. one. But most, a lot of school of thoughts don't even acknowledge that. So they just, they'll sign it and still get in the second wife anyway. It depends. <laughs> it depends on what school of thought you follow. I don't follow that school of thought. So it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, put as many, put whatever conditions you want. I don't follow <laughs> <laughs> you know? Put anything you want. Yeah. That's the mad stuff. Let me hit you with my personal question, bro. Yeah. What's seven things you can't live without? Seven, that's a lot, bro. I'm quite everybody says, everybody says that. Says everyone says that. Um, I couldn't live without Islam. Couldn't live without my son. Mm-hmm. Couldn't live without money because I'd die. I couldn't live without, I say I couldn't live without my family, but they're going to die at some point. Like my parents, my grandparents, like I'm very, very close. My grandparents are like my best friends. Like I, I'm very, very close to them. I see you them said you just come from seeing them as well? What was that? And that's my other granddad. But I yeah. see my, um, so my mum's mum and dad, I see them at, so before I moved away, I'd go there like four times a week, like minimum. I'm oh, always there. Like I was there yesterday, I was there the day before. I'm always there. Um, but I say I can't live without him, but I'm gonna have to at some point if mm. if, if if I don't die first. So, um, Islam, my son, money. Four more. <laughs> I, know, four more. I, I can't think of four. Well, I can't live without. It. I can live without a lot, man. Um, because money buys a lot, any like comfort stuff like that. Mm. True, true. Um, purpose, but that comes from religion anyway, though. I guess everybody needs to be loved. I think you have to have love to survive, man. I think, imagine not being loved. Like, you could live with I, but what a horrible existence it would be. I think it's good to mm. love people and show love. This guy mm. comes to speed past again. 
Yeah, trying to show in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You always have bare cars coming around here. It's like that. Um, my phone. Mm. It's serious. Mm. Um, how many have I got now? Got three more. No, you got two more. Two more. It's a phone. I'm sure you said love as well. Yeah, love. Oh, yeah. Five. Food. <laughs> and water. And what? I've right. <laughs> <laughs> right. got an easy cop out of water. So this is this is the final question I'm gonna ask you. So we've got two more questions, one from me and then the last one from my previous guest. Okay. My final question is if you could send a message to the younger you, what would you say? Learn about myself, learn about I'd definitely say learn I wish I had a lot more emotional intelligence, why I feel certain things, where they come from. Because I've borderline personality disorder as well. I got diagnosed like Last year? Oh. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff... Or so how so I, what is that, just to be clear? So basically, it just comes from like abandonment issues as a child and stuff like that. So when you like process information, you don't process it right. So basically, it just means like what might upset somebody would really upset me or really hurt me a lot more than somebody else. Or um, if someone does something, I might feel like they're trying to, they don't care about me anymore and things like that. Whereas other people just think, oh, no, I just can't see today for whatever reason. I'll think bare deep into it. Like I'll, it'll trigger me back to childhood things. Um... So I'd like to, and I think it come out a lot of sideways and stuff like I'd be very insecure as a kid. That's why I'd never walk away from fights, things like that. So I wish I just learned about and understood why, why I was the way I was and just learned a lot more about myself. Then I reckon I'd have had a far better understanding of myself and life and I'd have had a better life. Yeah, yeah so that's what I'd give, tell myself, yeah. Serious, I like that. All right, the final question from our previous guest is, how do you spend your money? <laughs> bitches <laughs> <laughs> nah bro I don't um, I, what do I spend it on life bro bills bro bills. I spend my money on bills bro I swear to god bills do not stop um, that's, bills and food I spend most of my money on bills and food because I don't cook so I eat out every, all day every day I've done for the past I don't know seven years how much money you spend on takeout oh like I don't know I don't even like want to know I don't even know I don't want to know bro it's a lot because I eat out three times a day so We'll do the oh, just eating out. <laughs> That's a I breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. On Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everything, bro. I don't cook. What, so. what they got over there? Is it Uber Eats over there as well? They got Uber Eats, Kareem, Insta Shop. Insta Shop, you just buy like you can just order like a pile of pop and chocolate bar from the, like, from on the Insta? shop. On Insta Shop, it's called. Oh, it's Insta like the shop. And they just come to your house and drop it off, yeah, whether it's yeah. bottles of water, whatever you need. Like, what's, 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 what's the superstores like? They got superstores over there, right? Like yeah, they got spinnies and stuff like that. It's good, man. Way better in the UK. He's, he's like, they, they've always got them freshly squeezed orange juice things. They've got like um, different kinds of healthy options pastas or whatever you need then they've got like cake everything you want they've got bro it's a different world that yeah. everything you need they've got that's it and I can, say, I can see you in the way you got that same glow Tris, Tris came man yeah all of them nice. come glowing man. <laughs> yeah I'm just like, like yo this sun. ain't UK somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> UK <laughs> yeah no it's but, nice uh, out there man but Ty I'd like to thank you very much man thanks for having me on my nice 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 n